Okay, we are really doing this. We're very close to start, officially start the hackathon. And I'm really pleased and excited to present the keynote speaker that is joining me on the stage. Uh, I would love to invite Maciej Cieletski uh, from 10 Clouds, who's Hello. been supporting Tech to the Rescue from the very beginning, but is also one of the thought leaders and experts in AI. I would love to give the stage to Maciej. Hi, Maciej. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, Daniel. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yes, we are very, very glad that you're with us. And I will just get to the uh, background and leave you the whole time is yours. All the lights are on you. Enjoy. And everyone, this is the first keynote speech. Enjoy. Let me share my screen then. Uh, is it visible? Uh, it's getting okay. visible. I will it's also <laughs> I will also let know our um, uh, participants that there will be a chance to ask questions to Maciej. Uh, we might be able to ask them at the end, or it will be possible to ask questions in the Discord. So don't get discouraged. Wait for the right moment, and now listen to Maciej. Thank you. And feel free to go to Discord and ask them there. And after the presentation, I will go there and see if I can answer them. Probably that will be uh, most practical. Uh, so today's presentation will be about embracing the fear, solving people's problem with the most frightening technology of all time. And the topics I will be covering are th the, those are three: the current narrative around AI. Are we going to live? <laughs> That's the second topic. And three is uh, like tips and tricks of how to navigate this and actually make this into our advantage instead of a, uh, something to fear. Uh, so the first thing is that uh, there is a lot of news around AI and uh, a lot of actually technological progress that is happening. There's probably a thousand tools already out. Uh, like every week seems to be coming with uh, new stuff. Even yesterday, OpenAI announced changes to their API, which, for example, significantly uh, impact my work. Uh, so it's, it can be very daunting and overwhelming, uh, especially with this, this uh, narrative that this is going to just kill us uh, eventually. And we have been raised on various sci-fi movies and predictions of how AI will behave, that it will be just this gigantic Skynet that will rebel and start to kill off humanity. Uh, recently, there is a lot of fears that, would, that there will be no jobs left for humans uh, and uh, there will be rampant media manipulation. And eventually, like when it reaches the AGI stage, uh, there will be no resources for us because AI will just choose not to uh, give any resources to uh, human beings which seem to be like not useful for it eventually leading to just killing us off but what i want to state is that i don't believe that that narrative and i think that it is actually the reason why we are hearing it is that because it's newsworthy like and it's something that is plaguing us not not even in the ai space but in probably all of the spaces where like the 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 fear, uncertainty, and doubt is what is catchy and what what is worth spreading about, and it's easy to digest. And I have a different opinion on that: how this future will look like. And but first, few words: who I am and where this, where those things come from. So I'm a developer at heart. Uh, I dropped out out of my PhD uh, around 13 years ago, and I started running Ten Clouds, which is a a software agency that specializes in helping clients uh, build digital products. I built it as a CEO to a team around 200. Around, around one and a half years ago, I took a deep dive into, into like hands-on GPT usage. Uh, and there's one aspect that is very interesting is that what I call an Asperger advantage, uh, because I have Asperger syndrome, which sometimes is not very useful. But then in this situation, it is because all of this space is very uncertain. This new AI wave, it's very hard to grasp where actually it will lead, what it's actually capable of. But then if you spend around 80 hours a week playing around with it, then you have a distinct 
understand understanding that is very hard to get even with knowledge like previous knowledge around AI because I think like most of the previous knowledge and intuition about AI that is built on the previous waves of it is irrelevant in this stage and my goal is to, like to start to live in the uh, and understand the future that uh, most of the humanity will expand in the ex experience in a few years and, and jokingly I call myself an AI loyalist uh, because like I, I really am uh, on the front of that this is that AI will be good for us and this is what I'm going to say is not newsworthy but it's different and a few things and a few things that uh, and a few topics that I think that people are not necessarily that are not surfacing uh, one is a superior empathy and what do I mean by that uh, like based on and I think like many of you probably already know this that GPT is really good at deducing human emotions from text and I encourage you actually to in order to understand what I mean maybe after the presentation to have a have a go at the following experiment take a conversation with you, a textual conversation with your spouse your significant other especially like the one where you felt you were right and the other side was wrong paste it in into chat GPT and ask what the other side was feeling the answer you will get is as an AI language model I cannot uh, deduce what the other person is feeling based on text but and then the part that goes after the but is the interesting aspect and I encourage you to do that experiment and see what it will answer because some of those things are not necessarily the things you were feeling and you were understanding about the state of the other uh, person you were talking to uh, during that conversation and if you would understand that and have that information there you'd probably act differently the other thing that you might ask is actually what would be the appropriate answer and it probably wasn't what you were going to answer there so it's it gives that immediate it has this immediate uh, super fast uh, uh, empathy empathy that uh, that is available for us which is completely different to what the science fiction told us because for example in Star Trek there was this android called data which his entire existence was about uh, uh, like learning like understanding those those bizarre human emotions and in here it seems like within especially like if this is going to progress that this is going to learn like to understand emotions far better than we do uh, the other thing that kind of comes from uh, from that is individual individuality and making things very very um, adjustable per human being because it won't be one Skynet that will just rule something there will be probably eight billion or even more AIs running and each of them serving a specific purpose and what that one of those things can be that it can be customized solely about you as a person as a person for example I built a prototype that uh, where I input a lot of information about myself my relationships uh, my calendar my to-do list and I ask it like okay be my coach what I should be doing right now what I should be what should be my priorities for today and those answers feel like they are super personal and super uh, in like they are in my favor they are, they really uh, are about myself and they can be about anyone individually that's the that's the the key thing that we'll get from this revolution and there is an aspect here that is also interesting uh, the fact that it can it that you can also adjust it to a very different kind of individuals for example me myself I'm much more logical and I prefer to be talking logic but for example there are other people who are not like that who, are, who prefer talking with more emotions or any other different preference and they will get the experience and understanding and will be able to communicate uh, in a way that they feel that it's right for them so and also like there is this concept of 
like the technology makes us less uh, like more lonely but i think like this technology will actually do the opposite because even if ais will be like for example one ai will be posting uh, things on linkedin the other one will be uh, replying to comments the, and then like the, the even the third one will reply to the, those comments and this will happen digitally but then like those assistants will be able to optimize for example for us to have time to have in-person relationships and even help us with them through like emp empowering our empathy levels the other thing that is very interesting here is that it, it may actually help and this is this is going to sound bizarre from today's point of view like how is that going to happen like how weird is that concept uh, is that because I even built recently a very simple prototype it's like a half a day of work uh, that allowed my son to talk to to GPT through my native native language Polish uh, and get response in Polish uh, through voice and he really asked questions about Minecraft about various things that he that interest him and what is interesting about that is that you can customize this and really build it in a way where it really uh, like helps you convey values and teach the child what you really want want to convey for example you can say that when when and you can specify it like using an existing technologies uh, that you want the, you want for example uh, if a question is raised about Minecraft then add some information about for example how uh, how human relationships are important or try to put it in the context of the real world or if you're more into for example earning money then it could be teach the the child about how money works and the concept of Minecraft so you can really customize it and I can see that in the future there, I, I can I can totally see it that there will be like child custody battles where uh, the uh, the court decides whose AI is is uh, is uh, uh, the 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 child can have uh, access to whenever it's fathers or or mothers or who gets to decide what is being taught uh, taught there and some aspects of parenthood will actually go there and because of the previous aspects I I said it won't be as damaging as the current technologies and access to current technologies. So also like so to, to wrap this up so those are the things that I feel like that they have a huge potential for for actually building a better future for us and even if there will be a, a if even if it will be taking some of our jobs I think that in terms of quality of life there might be a significant improvement and uh, two three, uh, tips and tricks and to like to, to wrap it up a few three tips and tricks I learned from 2162 hours of talking to AI 2.0 and that's a rough estimate so what do I mean by by AI uh, 1.0 versus 2.0 so all of this new wave has a distinct difference between what happened before and what happened now uh, one thing is that uh, there is this this game was about uh, having a lot of data training your own models for specific usage and then using it for specific usage it's completely different with models on this on the level of gtp4 and this is going to just get better with gtp4 you can instruct the system the model to do something and then it will just do that and it doesn't require any information other than the instructions so it, there's very little data that you need in order for it to perform a specific task that you require and it's a completely different paradigm of building systems. Uh, the other thing is, which I would really encourage you to explore, that uh, those large language models are not just chat. I know ChatGPT is like the most significant product that was built around this, but it's like it it pains me greatly to see how most of the products that are being built are like mimicking that interface and to give you an example something that that actually we just released uh, uh yesterday actually is like a, a tool for programmers you can 
let me just pause it for a second you can download even download it now and even use it during the hackathon if you if you like if you want to if you if you like experimentation um it's a visual studio code plugin and what it what it does it has a slightly different interface because most of the interaction happen not through the chat but through actually through the editor because you select the code oh let me and, and to, to give you the, an example of the of the interaction you select the code it gives you a uh, a recommendation of what to do with it and then you just press go and then like one of the minions gets spawned and it just try to do that job and you can spawn multiple ones and then after it finishes you can just, uh, just review the, review it through a through a diff and then and it just applies the the differences directly to the code so there is no there is no chat even like the user didn't really input any kind of text here besides accepting the uh, the accepting the the suggestion of what can be done with that code and then here is an example of which is also a slightly different paradigm than usual chat is that you that the user is like figuring out a lot of different small tasks that they want to do on different parts of the code and just launching different kind of uh, minions on their own so they can have like multiple things working for him at the same time and it's also a different ui paradigm than the usual chat and it's like, like it's it's a kind of a my shameless plugin because i've been heavily involved in developing that uh, if you like it you can just download it even now the other thing so the, the the last thing that i wanted to say because like i'm i'm running out of time is uh, building a proof of concept in two days that has not been enabled by any other technology it's so easy to start with this and you don't even have to be a programmer in order to do that oh sorry about that you don't have to be a programmer in order to do that you can even like uh, use uh, Google spreadsheets with a plugin to build a proof of concept and chain those GTP commands, do the, do all of those little tricks uh, there and build even small solutions in, 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 in systems like that. It's of course difficult to build a fully scalable system, but then you can have like, you can have meaningful things really fast, which is remarkable. And this is something that I think this hackathon is, is uh, like I think you can do wonders in a in a span of two days and to wrap up are we all going to die uh, so what's the what's the answer to that question I have no idea <laughs> uh, but I think that there is a potential for a much better future uh, thank you for the for for listening and see you at the hackathon and feel free to contact me by any means either through discord or uh, if I can help all right thank you very much Maciek. very inspiring and uh, i gotta say i feel i felt goosebumps uh on my back listening to it i have uh some questions uh, I, I i see that we received some of them i wanted to uh ask you if if, if i may so i would love to um, know what role ai it, it's a little bit personal but maybe you will be willing to answer it Sure. what for you what role ai plays in raising your your own child like how do you yeah, see so, it so the, unfortunately this is fairly recent that uh, that uh, that I implemented that it's mostly uh, right now fun but there is this like really weird idea that propped into my mind immediately like oh maybe it can uh, read bedtime stories <laughs> yeah aren't you afraid that it's gonna replace you at some point no, no, actually, I, it's, it's, I, I don't think so. It is more of an agent. I, I see AI as an agent of my will. And mm -hmm. I think that it's the, way, the useful way to look at it. It's a tool and it's, it's interesting. Frank, frankly, I wouldn't be able to write a story that, does a, that is a mashup of Pokemon and Minecraft and Mario. It's not replacing me. <laughs> it's just it, better. <laughs> it's just better than me in this. Yeah, it's basically... Um... A, a, a power that extends your possibilities. I, I, I suppose that's how you describe it. 
I, I feel yeah. I, I have one more match. And it's like, a, I think at this stage, like before, before those tools are more advanced, I think that we are fairly safe and it's not going to replace parents, but it, it can augment us as parents really, really nicely. Can you imagine, uh, this is about the future. Uh, I would love to hear uh, the comment of you and probably this is going to be the last one. Uh, can you imagine transferring all your knowledge and your consciousness to AI and building your own self uh, that would stay with your kids long after your you and and your wife are gone? Whoa! This is <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, I I thought that that's a kind of a bizarre bizarre thing uh, because like is it still me? No. <laughs> But then like this kind of it's it feels like so I don't see it as a way of like, extending my life, but then it can can serve a different purpose. It can be your your heritage, your your the thing that you leave to the to the to, to posteriority and even like a monument of yourself. So it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting concept. Yeah, the legacy of you and uh, legacy. That was the word I was looking for, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope this hackathon is going to uh, leave some legacy and projects that are going to serve humanity and will be of use for many that came here and would love to build something for good. I really appreciate your uh, perspective, Maciek. Thank you very much for all that you do, uh, all your efforts supporting Thank initiatives you very for good. Much. Yes, and, and we would much more for good than I do. Well, we will be happy to have you uh, anytime again in the future. Thank you again. And Maciej will be available in the Discord. So if there are some questions, you can always drop them there. We will also make sure to pass them to Maciek uh, for sure. Thanks, Maciek. All right. <laughs>